Hello everybody and welcome to the video on energy changes within and between orbits. When we look at energy in orbits, we look at particularly two types of energy, kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. By way of review, kinetic energy is determined by the mass of the object and also its velocity, half mv squared. Gravitational potential energy is given by capital M, which is mass of the planet or the star. So this is the mass around which the object is orbiting. And smaller m is mass of the actual object itself. And of course, r here is the orbital radius. Let's start looking at circular orbits. In circular orbits, the kinetic energy is dependent on the mass of the satellite or the planet and also its orbital velocity. The orbital velocity is given by the square root of g capital M over r. And again, the capital M is the central mass. We can substitute this equation into my kinetic energy equation to get a more simplified version for kinetic energy, which is g m m over 2r. The gravitational potential energy is given by the equation minus g m m over r. So when we look at the total energy, this is given by the total of kinetic energy plus gravitational potential energy. So we can take the expression for kinetic energy that we just derived earlier, and we can add that to our gravitational potential energy. And this gives us a very simple expression for the total energy, which is minus g m m over 2r. And this can be rewritten as a half times by minus g m m over r. And this is our gravitational potential energy. So for objects in circular orbits, the total energy is also given by this very unique equation of half times by its gravitational potential energy. This only applies to circular orbits. Within a circular orbit, we have constant radius. So that is the orbital radius of the object remains the same throughout its orbit. Now this means the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy, as these two energies both depend on the orbital radius, they will both also remain constant throughout the circular orbit. And as we showed before, the total energy, which is given by minus g m m over 2r, it is also dependent on the radius. So if the radius remains constant, then the total energy also remains constant. Now, things get more interesting when we look at energy changes within a elliptical orbit. In an elliptical orbit, we also examine the kinetic energy and also the gravitational potential energy as well. And these are given by the same equation as we saw before. The total energy is again equal to the sum of these two energy forms, so half mv squared minus g m m over r. The only caveat here for elliptical orbits is that our generic orbital velocity equation, square root over g m over r, this does not work for elliptical orbits. This expression for orbital velocity only applies for circular orbits, which is why I did not substitute this equation into my kinetic energy equation. For elliptical orbits, the radius obviously changes, and this is the major difference between elliptical orbits and circular orbits. As the planet is orbiting the sun, as it is approaching the part where the radius is shorter, its kinetic energy increases, while its gravitational potential energy decreases. The two energy types change in such a way that the total energy of the planet remains constant. In other words, using the law of conservation of energy, our gravitational potential energy is being transformed into our increasing kinetic energy. So they change by the same amount. Now, as the planet Earth is moving away from the sun, as the radius is increasing, the opposite happens. Its kinetic energy decreases, while its gravitational potential energy increases. And a transformation occurs in the opposite way the kinetic energy is being transformed into the increasing gravitational potential energy. 
Now, regardless of whether the orbital radius decreases or increases, the total energy for a elliptical orbit, which is given by minus g m over 2a, where a here is the major axis of the ellipse, this also remains constant. This is a similarity between circular orbits and elliptical orbits. The total energy of the planet or the satellite in elliptical orbit also remains constant, even though its kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy change throughout the orbit. What we just spoke about regarding energy changes can also be related to Kepler's laws of planetary motion, specifically its second law. Now, by way of review, the second law proposed by Kepler states that in equal time, a planet that's orbiting in elliptical motion around the sun or its star will sweep out the same area. So if the planet Earth takes one month to sweep across the two given areas, as shown here, then the area of these two sectors, A1 and A2, will be identical. Now, this should make sense because, as we said, as the planet is approaching the orbit where the radius is becoming shorter, its kinetic energy is increasing, which means its velocity is also increasing. If its velocity is increasing, it will be able to traverse a greater distance throughout the orbit as compared to the opposite side. Now, as it's approaching the star with a longer radius, its kinetic energy is decreasing. That means its velocity is decreasing. So it is able to traverse a smaller distance. But the two areas swept out by this imaginary line will be the same because the radius over here is much longer compared to over here in A1. So to summarize, because gravitational force that's responsible for the circular and elliptical orbits is a conservative force, we can apply the law of conservation of energy. And that tells us the total energy of the planet or the satellites that's in the orbit will remain constant. And by using this law, we can then say, as the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy change throughout the orbit, the amount by which the change will be exactly equal. So the delta Ke is equal to minus the delta U. The implication of this is tremendous because if we know the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy of the planet at a given point, we can then find out about the kinetic energy and also the gravitational potential energy at a second point over here because we know the total energy remains the same. So suppose we've got two points, P and Q. We know that P will have a kinetic energy of half m, that's called a Vp, squared minus gmm over Rp, where Rp is, of course, the radius at point P. Now, this will be equal to the kinetic energy at point Q, in the same orbit, half mvq squared minus gmm over rq. So the total of the two energy types will be identical regardless of where you are in elliptical orbits. Finally, let's look at energy changes between orbits. This is a similarity between circular and elliptic orbits, so we'll discuss them together. The total energy of a planet or a satellite depends on its orbital radius, or in elliptical orbits, this is the major axis, A, of the elliptical orbit. In general, when you have a higher orbit, so that means when you have a higher orbital radius or a longer major axis, A, the total energy and the gravitational potential energy of the planet or the mass will increase. In contrast, its kinetic energy will decrease. And you can see this quite nicely in this graph here. As you go from the left to right, the radius is increasing for the orbits. Its kinetic energy is decreasing, while both of its total energy and potential energy both increase and become less negative. 
The implication of this is that we always need to do positive work on a mass, whether it's a planet, more often a satellite, to move it to a higher orbit. This concludes the video on energy changes within and between orbits.